My name is Max and welcome to Neatbox Laboratories. First off I'd like to say I haven't had a chance to work on these projects in a while or put out any new content but I would very much so like to say thank you for all the many kind and encouraging comments I've received on the immersion cooling projects. Furthermore several people have contacted me and they've built immersion cooling setups based either partially or wholly on the original oil can and they work very well and I'm very glad to hear that. What I'd like to talk about today is an experiment based on a discussion I have with my good friend about heating his new house with Bitcoin. And the thought was perhaps try something other than immersion cooling and see what happens. The fans used on the miners seem to be pretty much all standard. They are these 120 millimeter pulse width modulated fans. Uh, how they work is the miner sends a chop DC signal to the fan and based on the frequency of the of the pulse width modulated signal that will determine the speed of the fan. Uh, accordingly it also receives a signal back to the miner to know what the actual speed it's turning at. Um, these fans are about 3640 watts um, they're 12 volts DC and they put out about 280 CFM of air. However, that is at a zero pressure differential, meaning if you, know, if you put anything in front of it, this airflow will drop very significantly. In order to move that much air, these fans have to sp spin at very high speeds, you know, six, seven thousand RPM. So that makes them very, very loud. And that I think is the biggest obstacle to small scale mining, is the very loud incessant noise. The one advantage these fans do have is they're very cheap and simple to mount. Uh, these things are like, you know, five bucks if you buy them by the Connex as an OEM. Now if we look at the latest and greatest in mining technology, you know, it's very power dense. Uh, something like an S19, which today is the top of the line miner, uh, you know, puts out something like close to three and a half kilowatts of power. That requires a lot of air to move through it. Thus, the four fans that are on it uh, are very loud. I mean, these things are something like 95 to 100 decibels. That's hazardous to your hearing health. You don't want to be around such high noise levels without hearing protection. You know, 100 decibels is approaching the sound of a gunshot. That's very loud, and that makes it very difficult to uh, mount this uh, miner in many places. So the thesis of this experiment is what if we can replace these little fans with their many problems with this, a squirrel cage blower. This is the same as was used on our previous oil cooled builds. Um, these kind of squirrel cage centrifugal blowers are very common in HVAC applications. They're reasonably inexpensive. They can move a lot of air with very low power. They're very efficient. They're typically more efficient than the, uh, these kind of fans. Um, furthermore, they develop much higher pressure. Um, you know, think about like uh, if you mount a duct, you know, you have to overcome the resistance of that duct to move the air. The, these kinds of fans will not, but the squirrel cage blower will. Um, so how this device works is a motor turns this impeller. Uh, air goes in this way. It's forced down into the clamshell housing. Comes out through this direction. This particular one is a one-third horsepower. A blower it came out of a common household furnace and I got it from my friendly recycler at very reasonable prices. In order to connect the miners and the blower I made an adapter plate right here out of 5 8 inch thick plywood and then I cut uh, holes to match the fan inlets on the bottom and used the fan mounting screws from this little fan plate to clamp them onto this adapter plate. And then this adapter plate is held on to the blower using, using these 1032 screws and this uh, channel that came mounted on the blower originally. I also drilled two quarter inch holes in this open space in the miners and put two quarter inch screws, one in each miner, to clamp onto this unit piece of strut here because I don't think there's enough meat on these uh, end plates to hold the miner uh, by itself. I mounted these miners with the boards facing this way. So if you have to remove the boards to clean them, you just pull this little cover plate off 
unhook the power supplies and you can pull the boards out and clean them. Uh, in order to do that you have to break the stops uh, preventing this cover from sliding forward and move this control board a little further. This whole assembly is mounted on this unistrot uh, with the thought of perhaps down the line uh, hanging this from a ceiling like a shop heater. I wired this blower uh, through this speed controller, these are you know real common on Amazon, they work reasonably well, to the lowest speed setting. One strange phenomenon I did find in this is that there's a particular speed range, maybe a third or so of the way on the speed range at the lowest setting, where the air will rush past the miners and create a very loud and annoying whistling noise, but once you speed it up a little it kind of goes past this point and the whistling noise goes away. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that a little while later. These two miners uh, I put on Brains OS which is the slush pool operating firmware. I'm very happy with it. Uh, it lets you eliminate the fans through the software. It also lets you run the miners a little more powerfully and overclock them a little bit. These two miners run at about 1480 watts each and reliably hash about 16 or so giga hashes. During operational testing this setup uh, ran in an environment with an ambient temperature approximately 72 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, these two miners running Brains OS uh, software each consumed about 1480 watts or roughly 2900 watts for the pair. Uh, they ran at a steady 16 terahashes and I got chip temps of in the low 70C range, sometimes in the high 60s, and board temps in the, about 50 degrees Celsius. Um, this blower at that range consumes 1.6 amperes of current, which translates to approximately 180 watts. These four fans that were replaced with this blower would have consumed approximately 150 watts. So adding this blower costs in electrical terms roughly the power of one of these uh, little fans. So in theory, if we could replace these S9s with one S19, this blower should give us the same amount of airflow, but at probably 25 or 30 decibels less noise and at that power level this blower still has plenty of reserve you, you can really crank this up and get a lot more air furthermore the airflow that we're getting comes out at a much higher pressure that would allow this airflow to be ducted uh, in both in going in and going out so for example if you wanted to mount this in an enclosed space you could take cold air from a reasonably long duct coming into here and going into the enclosed space or vice versa um, and this would be a lot easier than you know, using these little janky fans. So for the next steps I would like to build an experimental setup which would utilize four S9s and that would roughly approximate the power of two S19s. Uh, I'm working with a very high-end cabinet shop locally to build a such a device uh, we're going to make it a real high quality plywood and perhaps we can look into putting it into production down the line. Please let me know what you think of this particular setup and if you have any ideas that we could mount such a device or if it would be useful to you. I'd love to hear back from all of my many viewers and commenters. Um, I think this will possibly be a good option uh, as an alternative to immersion cooling in some cases and would prove to be useful. Um, so I hope to have parts, uh, further parts of this experiment out shortly. Uh, thank you for watching and keep mining them cryptos.